Okay, what we're going to do now is take a look at creating the types that we need for the member. And what we'll do, if we go back to Postman first of all, then we basically need a type that contains all of these properties. And we need a photo type as well, because our members have got photo arrays. Now what we could do is type all of this information in by hand, and that's certainly an option. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this into my clipboard as a whole. And then we're going to go and search Google. And we're going to search for JSON, which is what we have, to TS. And we'll see what we get from this little Google search. And what we get is a bunch of sites that are going to give us the option to convert our JSON object into TypeScript. So let's click on this one, JSON to TS. And what we can do inside here is paste in our JSON object and check out this. We get our TypeScript interface with all the properties we need created. And it's not done a bad job of working out what we need. So I'm just going to use the copy to clipboard. We'll head back to VS Code and inside our models folder, let's create a new file and we'll call it member.ts. And inside here, we'll paste in what we got from that lovely little website. And we'll need to export our interface. We're going to be using it inside our classes. And we're going to give it a name of member. And just double check these properties are accurate. They should generally be fine, but the dates are things that we'll need to adjust. And the created will change that to a date type. And same with the last active. And that looks good. And then we have an interface for our photo and we'll also export this one as well. And what we could do is move our photo into a new file. So it's got its own TS file. And just to be consistent, I'm just gonna rename this and give it a, a lowercase p. What have we got here? We've got an update imports for photo TS and I'm going to say yes, even though I've not imported it anywhere. In fact, yes, we have. We've imported it in our member TS. So what we've got is import photo from photo and we've got our photo type as well. Wasn't that easy? We now have our types that we need to work with. And these are wonderful because we're going to get IntelliSense from all of this. We're going to get type safety and it's just going to make our development experience that little bit more pleasurable just from a little bit of copying and pasting. So what we're going to take a look at next is creating a service that we can use for our members. And we'll look at that next. Okay, there's going to be a certain flow to what we do now. We'll typically start with the types that we need when we're about to get some new data back from our API. The next thing we'll do is we'll go to our service and we'll set up what we need inside there. But what we're going to do first of all is we're going to start to think about hard coding certain things in our files. And what we did for the, if we take a look at our services and we take a look at our account service, then what we have in here is a hard coded string. And we don't want hard coded strings in our application. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take advantage of these environment files inside our Angular projects. We have two of them. We have environment.ts and we have environment.prod. .ts. And what we can put inside this is any variables we want to use across our application that will automatically use a different version when we're in production. So we've got these two files. Now environment.ts, this is what we're going to use for our development. And we're going to have a property in here called API URL. And what we're going to set this to is HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash local host colon 5001 forward slash API forward slash, just like we had it in our service. And what we'll do for the environment.prod.ts is we'll add the same property, API URL, but this time what we're going to set it to is API forward slash. When we publish our application, we're going to publish our Angular application and host it from our ASP.NET core application. So what we'll have here is just API for the URL. And then what we can do is we can go back to our account service and we can remove this hard coded base URL. 
And what we can put in its place is we can say environment and we'll get the auto import from source environments. Please take the first one because the second one's going to import it from prod, whereas we want this one. And Angular is going to automatically use the right one depending on which environment we're in. And then we can just specify API URL. And now we've no longer got that hard coded string in our service. So what we'll do is we'll create a new service for our members. So we'll open up the terminal and we'll CD up to the app. Then we'll CD into our services. And then we'll say NGG S for service. And we're going to call this one members and we're going to skip dash tests and press return. And boom, we have a new service. So let's close all of this down and we'll open up the member service, which we'll work on now. So we know we need the base URL and we'll add this property in and we're going to set this equal to environment dot API URL. And because it's a service that's going to make HTTP requests to our API, we're also going to bring in the HTTP client as well. So we'll say private HTTP and bring in the HTTP client here. And what we're going to do in here is we're going to create two methods. And the first one's going to be called get members. And what we're going to do is return this.http.get. And what we're going to start to do now, in fact, not yet, we'll see what we need to put in for the types. And what we can do in here is specify the member type. But I'm going to see what we can do simply by using TypeScript inference. And then if the TypeScript inference is not good enough, then what we'll do is add specific types. And our goal is to get the most amount of type safety, the most amount of IntelliSense with the least amount of actually giving things types. So what we'll do is we'll say list.base URL and we'll say plus and our members endpoint is actually users. And what we also need to do here is think about how we're going to send up our authentication because our user's endpoint is protected by authentication. So we need to add that as a header. So what we'll do for the time being, this is a short term option. Uh, above the injectable, we're going to add a const called HTTP options. And what we're going to do inside here is we're going to specify headers, which is going to be new HTTP headers. And inside here, what we do is we specify what headers we want to provide. So in this case, we want to provide the authorization header. And we're going to set this equal to bearer. And we're going to add that very important space. And then we're going to say plus. And like I say, this is just temporary. So what we're going to do is get our token from local storage. So we'll say json.pass local storage get item and user and then what we want from this is our token and I can promise you we'll look at a more sophisticated way of doing that a bit later but what we can do now is we can pass the options that we need to our get members so we're going to say HTTP options and let's take a look and see what TypeScript has, has inferred from this and I can say now it's got absolutely no chance that of knowing that this is going to return a list of our members. And if we hover over this, then what this says this is going to return is an observable of an object. Hmm. Not really what we're looking for. So what we could do is say that our get members method returns a member array. But that doesn't work because we're not returning a member array from this. What we're returning is an observable of member array and that still doesn't work if we hover over the get members then that works fine we're returning this observable of get member but if we take a look at the method that's got an error then let's see if we can see what this complaint is and it's telling us that the observable object is not assignable to type observable member hmm Disappointing, but what we can do is specify the type inside the HTTP request. So what we can do is specify that this is going to return a member array and then the error goes away. I still feel like we've, we've specified our types in too many places here. So what I'm going to try and do 
is remove this type and see if we get away with this. Aha. Now if we hover over the get members then we can see that this is going to return an observable of member and we only needed to specify the type in our get request to tell it what we're receiving back from the server. So that's a bit more efficient and we're going to have full type safety and IntelliSense based on just adding this property inside here. So what we'll do is we'll also do the same for get member and this is going to take the username as a parameter and what we'll do is we'll return this.http.get and we'll give it a type of member and we'll say this.base url plus users forward slash plus username and we'll pass in our http options now we're getting that little ellipses under our username so what we should do when we see this is be explicit because there's a danger that our get member method would take a number as a parameter and we want it to tell us if we do that by mistake we want to make sure that this is only going to receive a string as its parameter so this is our member service just now and what we'll take a look at next is retrieving the list of members in our components